In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to special journals. First question, a sales return for credit on account would be recorded in the A, sales journal, B, general journal, C, cash receipts journal, D, direct posting journal, E, cash disbursements journal. So once again, we'll, we will read through these and see if we can eliminate some of the transactions or some, <laughs> some of the answers with the process of elimination. A sales return for credit on account would be recorded in the A sales journal. Now the sales journal would be what we use to record the sale and it's a very specific journal. It's only going to be sales. It's going to have like a debit to sales and a credit to um, the, the account, uh, a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to sales. And then if we're on a perpetual inventory system, a debit to um, the cost of goods sold and a credit to inventory. Very specific. It's not going to be there for the sales return because then we would have to reverse all that and we would so and the columns aren't set up to do that so it can't be the sales journal wouldn't be able to do, to do that and then b says the general journal now that's what we use when we don't have special when, when we can't find a special journal to record this so if we can't find a special journal we will default to or fall back on the use of the general journal which would just be to record debits and credits for this transaction c the cash receipts journal. Now, if we had a sales return uh, for credit, if we think about that journal entry, you know, if we made a sale, the best way to think about this journal entry is to is to say what would happen if we made a sale and then reverse it. If we made a sale, we would uh, debit the accounts receivable on account. We would credit the sales revenue, and then we would debit the uh, cost of goods sold and we would credit the inventory. So if we were to reverse that, then we, we would have to say that we had a sales return. Now we wouldn't debit sales, we would call it sales return that we would debit, and then we would credit accounts receivable. If the sale was returned, we would debit inventory because the inventory came back in, and then we would credit costs of goods sold. Now so it's very sloppy to write with a mouse like this, but. But that's basically what we would be doing. Now, they, there's no cash involved here, so it can't be going to the cash receipts journal. That's the point of all that. And then D, we have the direct posting journal. And I mean, I'm not sure that's a thing. So I'll keep it for now, but I'm not sure if that's really a thing. And then E says cash disbursements journal. And once again, there's no cash in this journal entry, so it can't go to the, either of the cash journals. So we're left with either B or D. So once again, if we read through this, we say a sales return for credit on account would be recorded in the either B, general journal, which is kind of like the default journal, or D, the direct posting journal. So really the question here is, you know, the direct posting journal, is that really a thing? Because if it's, and, and if it is, uh, would this journal, would this transaction go to it? And I don't think it's a thing. So I think that's not really real. And therefore, uh, it would have to default to the general journal. We would just make a normal journal entry for this as if we were not using special journals here because this transaction doesn't fit neatly into one. So let's read it one more time. A sales return for credit on account would be recorded in the B general journal. Next question. The posting of the sales journal at the end of the period includes a A debit to sales and credit to accounts receivable, B, debit to accounts receivable and credit to cash, C, debit to cash and credit to accounts receivable, D, debit to accounts receivable and credit to, uh, and credit sales, and E, debit to cash and credit to sales. One more time, we'll read through this and see if we can eliminate some options with the process of elimination. The posting of the sales journals at the end of the period includes A. So we're going to, we're talking about, we want to think through this a little bit before we go through here, because if we just read debits and credits, we'll get turned around all, all over the place if we don't have some idea before as we go into this. So the posting of the sales journal here at the end of the period. So we're really looking for the, the normal journal entry for the sales journal. Now the sales journal, 
It is a really specific journal. We only post things to the sales journal when we make a sale on account. And that means that we are going to debit accounts receivable and credit sales. So this is one of those types of, of uh, questions where you really want to think this through before reading it for a couple of reasons. One, if you read through this, it doesn't, you can't see the debits and credits formatted as debits and credits. And to me, that throws me off. I'm just reading words and it doesn't look like a debit in a credit format. So it, it kind of throws me off. And two, if you just read debits and credits like debit this, credit that, without first thinking of what you think it should be, then I, I think that's just, you're just going to confuse yourself. I think that's going to be confused. So I would write it out and try to say, hey, what do I think it should be first? And then go through here and see if we can verify this. So we're going to say A, debit sales and credit to accounts receivable. Now, see, this is one that's meant to turn us around because we don't debit sales. Sales is a, sales is a revenue account. It only goes up in the credit direction. We credit sales. So I'm, I'm going to eliminate that one. B says debit accounts receivable and credit to cash. And um, that would mean that uh, that doesn't really make, that doesn't really happen typically. <laughs> accounts receivable goes up and, oh no, yeah, we got paid. That's when we got paid on account. So anyways, not part of the sales journal because that would be after the sale happened uh, and it wouldn't be the actual sale. Then C says debit to cash and credit to accounts receivable. And again, cash is involved here. We don't record cash in the sales journal, only things dealing with sales on account. So it's not going to be that. D says debit accounts receivable and credit sales. That looks like what we guessed here. So I think that's going to be it. But let's read the last one. D says debit cash and credit to sales. Now this one's a tricky one too because it does say that we're crediting sales. That makes sense. We could make a sale for cash and debit cash. However, it wouldn't go in the sales journal. It would go into the um, into the cash receipts journal because we got cash. So these two, it probably could eliminate down to these two and then say, well, B D is actually the correct answer because cash is not involved in the sales journal. So final answer. The posting of the sales journal at the end of the period includes a D, debit to accounts receivable and credit to sales. Next one. The primary difference in the sales journal for the perpetual and periodic inventory systems is a only the perpetual system has a column to record cost of goods sold. B sales tax receivable column is used under the perpetual system but not the periodic c the sales tax payable column is used under the perpetual system but not the periodic d only the perpetual system uses receivable column e perpetual the perpetual system has a cash column Whew. okay let's read through this one more time see if we can eliminate some of these very long responses here the primary difference in the sales journal for the perpetual and periodic inventory system is. So before we go through, let's try to think this through a bit here. We're looking for a difference in the sales journal. Now the sales journal is that journal we make when we make sales on account. So that's typically something where we have like accounts receivable uh, going up and sales or revenue being the other side. So we're talking about that journal, very specific type of transaction that includes this transaction now a perpetual and a periodic inventory system has to do with inventory which would be the other side of this transaction meaning when we make a sale on account it's debiting cost of goods sold and inventory so th so that's going to be the question under under a perpetual system we record this second piece as we go each time we make a sale uh, under a periodic system, we're going to do a physical count and rely on that physical count to record the cost of goods sold in inventory periodically at the end of the system. So you would think that uh, this piece of the transaction would be the difference for a sales journal type of journal um, for, for this information. So let's go through this. A, only the perpetual system has a column to record cost of goods sold. And that it's kind of true because that's deals with this now it says only cost of goods sold it should be cost of goods sold and inventory 
So that looks correct, but maybe it's not totally correct because it doesn't have the rest of it. So I would read through the rest of them and see if there's a better answer that would be more complete. If not, I think that might be it. B, sales tax receivable column is used under the perpetual system, but not the periodic. Now, I, the sales tax, whatever system we use for sales tax, would have to be included in either system because we would still be recording the sales tax uh, in this in a similar way under the perpetual and periodic. So I don't think that's it. C, the sales tax payable is used under the perpetual system, but not the periodic. Again, it's the, the problem between the two is really on the cost of goods sold and inventory side, not on the sales and uh, receivable side. So I don't think it's dealing with sales tax. D, only the perpetual system system uses a receivable column. Um, that, that's not true because it's really on this side, the cost of goods sold and inventory we're concentrating on for any kind of problem. Both of them will be debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales. And E, perpetual system has a cash column. And uh, the sales journal doesn't have a cash column. doesn't matter what system we're using. If cash is received, then we would be dealing with the cash receipts journal. So it can't be that. So I think A is the most proper answer. Let's read it one more time. The primary difference in the sales journal for the perpetual and periodic inventory systems is A, only the perpetual system has a column to record cost of goods sold.